Hi everyone, I've got another miniature here for you now with Luke Van Whaley against Peter Axe, which was played in Hoogeveen in 2002. Van Whaley, if you don't know him, is a very strong Dutch Grandmaster and he was rated 2681 when this game was played. Peter Axe is a young Hungarian Grandmaster as well and was rated 2591 at the time of this game. Okay, so to get into the game itself anyway, Van Whaley was white and he opened with d4. And again, knight f6 from Axe and c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4 and e3. So with that move, it's the Rubenstein variation of the Nimzo Indian defense. Then black castles, and white play bishop d3, then d5, and c takes d5, which is slightly unusual. Like, the most popular line at this point is knight f3. But what Van Whaley is intending in this game is to develop his knight to e2. And he does that a few moves later, and it's just another way of handling the Nimzo Indian defense, which can be a bit tricky. But uh, what he played here with c takes d5 is, isn't as popular as the main knight. So the game continued, e takes d5, and then the knight went to e2, and then rook e8, and white castled, which is slightly dangerous given the position. Like It may have been better to delay castling for a bit, as now black has a clear target to aim at with the king castled in the corner, and he can immediately prepare an attack with bishop d6, which is what he played. And Van Whaley played quite passively here with a3, and he's just preparing some queenside play, but it's really too slow as a strategy. One of the benefits of developing his knight to e2 here was that it allows him to play f3, which keeps black's pieces out of g4 and e4. And uh, Axe was quick to take advantage of the fact that Van Whaley didn't play f3 here, and played knight g4 with immediate threats on h2 and Von Whaley answered that by playing h3 but it was really the wrong move like uh, g3 is another possibility but that's also pretty bad because it weakens the king's side too much the best defense was knight f4 when after for example g5 is trying to kick that knight so the h2 pawn will fall knight f takes d5 can be played and after bishop takes h2 check king h1 and queen d6 it looks like white is in trouble but he can play bishop e2 and after bishop g1 knight to f6 check knight takes f6 king takes g1 he's fine he's completely escaped from the situation and he's got the two bishops and good central control and black's king is weakened so there was a way to escape the attack but Van Whaley didn't find it and he played h3 instead. So then came knight h2, which is uh, a funny looking move, but now black is able to generate a strong attack from that move. Um, Van Whaley played rook e1, and here Axe played a brilliant move. If you want to try and spot it, then stop the video now. What he played was knight to f3 check which is by far the strongest move and much stronger than for example bishop takes h3 because so after g takes h3 knight to f3 check king g2 knight takes c1 queen takes c1 white would stand better and have the advantage here so knight to f3 just sacking the knight is the strongest continuation and after g takes f3 queen g5 check king h1 it's looking strong for black and king h1 r really is the best way to deal with the check like if instead knight g3 then bishop takes g3 f takes g3 queen takes g3 check king to h1 queen takes h3 check you know it's easily winning for black after this continuation with a rook lift coming and it's just a crushing advantage for black <coughs> excuse me so king h1 is the best way to deal with the check and then came queen h4 and knight f4 which is essentially a blunder and loses the game outright but even with the best defense black had a big advantage like say for example if f4 then queen takes h3 check king g1 bishop g4 and black is winning as the bishop will soon come to f2 and the queen will give mate on g2 and this knight can't move because it's pinned of course 
and if uh, white tries to break the pin with for example queen a4 then bishop f3 again with the mate threats on g2 and after for example the queen takes e8 check it's the only way to avoid the mate bishop f8 and now there's no escape it's mate in three moves whatever white does so knight f4 and then came bishop takes h3 and then knight on c takes d5 from Pamwili, which is pitiful really but it was the best move like anything else leads either to a mate in a few moves or a very strong position for black for example if he tries knight takes h3 then queen takes h3 check and it's mate in 4 with king g1 bishop h2 check king h1 bishop g3 discover check from the queen king g1 queen h2 check king f1 and queen takes f2 mate so knight c takes d5 and uh, here I played another good move which is rook e6 with strong threats like the rook coming across to the h file and here Van Whaley really miscalculated and took the rook with his knight with knight takes e6 and after this it's a forced mate in seven moves which Axe presumably had figured out he played a bishop f5 with a discover check on the king and king g1 queen h2 check king f1 and bishop g3 and here Van Whaley resigned only 18 moves into the game because of course he'd now seen that he could not escape the mate um, for example if he plays if he takes the bishop then bishop h3 simply is mate so after bishop g3 like say for example to show you how the game would continue with best play from both sides would be knight to e7 check king h8 and queen d2 to stop the mate threat on f2 with the queen and the bishop but after bishop takes d3 check the queen can't recapture because of that mate threat so the only move to escape the mate is rook e2 and then Queen h1 simply is mate. So a brilliant game from Peter Axe who was only 20 years old when this game was played and I don't know what the story is with him now but he's surely a, a strong force in the chess world and he's one to watch anyway. I'll um, replay the game just with the threatened squares highlighted so you can see it from start to finish. Yeah, so it was a Rubenstein variation of the Nimzo Indian, which is a fairly common way of dealing with it, but uh, taking there on d5 was unusual, although it's not unheard of, but it can be kind of risky, especially with that passive queenside move as well. It was uh, throwing caution to the wind, really, and then the exchange sack, and well, that's a force made in seven after that. And uh, Axe saw it. Brilliant. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.